Dr. Chen Cheng Fang is an assistant professor in the Department of Chemical Engineering and Material Sciences in the College of Engineering. She joined Michigan State University in the fall of 2020. She completed her undergraduate studies in material science and engineering at Zhejiang in, uh, University in China, then went on to obtain her Master's of Philosophy in Innovative Technology uh, Leadership from Hong Kong University of Science and Technology with a concentration in energy and environment. Dr. Fong earned her PhD in material science and engineering from the University of California, San Diego, where she also completed postdoctoral research in the Department of Nano Engineering. She just received the material science, uh, materials research graduate, or recently received the Materials Research Society Graduate Student Award in 2019, and most importantly was named uh, to the MIT Technology Review's 35 innovators under 35 in the world. So that's, that's a remarkable achievement. And it's even more remarkable because she joined us in the fall of 2020 and had about five months absent from her lab during that period. Um, so that's, that's a great recognition for our faculty. Her research has answered some of the most critical scientific questions on lithium battery, battery metal failure mechanisms and pioneered the principal approaches towards solving this issue regarding safety, cycle life, and fast charging. Her research group focuses on developing multi-scale quantitative characterization tools and designing advanced materials and manufacturing methods for next generation energy storage devices. She'll be discussing more about this work in her presentation this morning. Please welcome Dr. Fong. Thanks, Dr. Gage, for the nice introduction. Today, I'll be talking about a new type of battery that can enable our future of electrified transportation. Actually, the modern lithium-ion batteries has significantly reshaped our daily life in many ways, from how we work, how we communicate, to how we drive. The global EV market has been projected to reach $1,000 billion by 2030. In the United States, as you can see from this figure, it is projected that the EV market share will increase from today's about 5% to about 30% in 2030. So this is based on the assumption that the battery energy density will increase about 5% per year. However, if a disruptive battery technology would be available in the next few years, we can reasonably expect this linear increasing trend to become exponential and really in, uh, enable many of the emerging concepts, such as the power drones for goods transportation and the very fancy electric airplanes that can vertically take off and land for our daily use. So the vision of the electrified transportation will not only significantly improve our life quality, but also is a critical step to uh, reduce the human fo carbon footprint and to fight climate change. So in the vision of the future smart cities, actually battery will be one of the most important infrastructures to enable the renewable energy, such as the solar and wind energy, by providing uh, reliable energy storage solutions, which will significantly increase the efficiency and enhance the resilience of our modern cities. But why it's so difficult to develop a better battery? So this figure summarizes the, the development of modern commercial batteries. Uh, the lithium-ion technology we are using today, as indicated, uh, as, as indicated by the blue curve, was actually developed 30 years ago. And it's reaching its theoretical energy density limitation. But it's still not a satisfactory uh, for the electrified transportation application, which requires the highest performance of battery in terms of energy, power, cycle life, fast charging, and low temperature capabilities, cost, and safety. The theoretical calculation also tells us the batteries that are built with lithium metal, which my lab is focusing on, are the ultimate choice to double the energy density of today's lithium ion technology. That means we will be able to double the mileage per charge in our EVs uh, using the new type of lithium metal battery. That will fundamentally address our mileage anxiety when we drive an a EV, a EV. So what is a lithium metal battery? Let's first look into today's lithium ion battery. So inside of the battery, the lithium ions actually 
uh, shuttle back and forth inside the battery, and the electrons go through the external circuit to provide electricity. So inside this lithium-ion battery, the graphite was used as the anode to host the, the lithium-ions that comes from the uh, cathode side. So based on the mechanism called intercalation chemistry, so that we can safely use our battery. However, this kind of intercalation chemistry using graphite is also the limitation for energy density, uh, fast charging, and low temperature performance. In fact, just by simply remove the graphite, the battery can still function. So in this new type of mechanism, we directly electrochemically deposit the, the lithium ions that comes from the cathode side to the anode side to form lithium metal. So this is the so-called lithium metal battery. By looking at the schematic, you can uh, easily feel that the lithium, by removing the graphite, our batteries can be much lighter, thinner, and easier for manufacturing. So now we're going to solve the problems on the lithium metal side. So lithium metal is believed to be the holy grail anode because lithium is the lightest solid on Earth. And it has the lowest negative potential, which means you can get the highest possible voltage from a single cell by using lithium anode. And it also has the ultra high capacity that is more than 10 times higher than that of the graphite. However, because the lithium metal is so reactive, it has a lot of problems in our practical application in a battery. So during the charging process, the lithium can easily grow as the dendrite, which can cause short circuit and explosion of our battery. And during the discharge process, because of the formation of the so-called inactive lithium, the cycling efficiency can be very low. So your cy the cycle life probably can be, you can only cycle your battery for at most 100 cycles. That's not applicable. So actually, uh, my group focuses on addressing those most challenging problems associated with lithium metal in order to enable their practical application. We were able to identify the key problem to be solved uh, from a whole complicated uh, failure mechanism. That is, how can we control the lithium growth from the dendritic to fully dense? Our previous research built a quantitative morphology performance relationship. It tells us if the lithium grows as whiskers or dendrites during the charging process, the cycling efficiency and cycle life of our battery can be very low. However, if we were, if we were able to achieve a fully dense lithium deposition with the ideal columnar morphology, we can significantly improve our cycling efficiency and get a long cycle life. Then the question is, how can we get this ideal morphology? Our recent research actually identified the stack pressure as a f powerful tuning knob to precisely control the lithium growth morphology during the battery operation. As you can see, we can, by optimizing the stack pressure, we can tune the morphology from the, right, uh, the left-hand side uh, whiskers all the way to the fully dense lithium. And these two images shows that we achieved the ideal morphology we predicted. This uh, picture is actually uh, probably represents the highest level of manipulation of electrochemistry lithium deposition in human history. So what does this morphology mean in a real battery? I hope this schematic can help you better understand. So without regulation, the lithium metal can easily grow as dendrite to uh, short, short circuit the battery and that can cause explosion. Our approach using the stack pressure to control the, to, to moderate uh, to control the lithium growth during the battery operation can significantly densify and make the lithium uh, cycling very uh, reversibly. So this means we can use our high energy lithium metal battery safely. Um, more exciting is our recent research further identified that the stack pressure can be a powerful tuning knob to enable the fast charging capability of such appealing high energy batteries. So this is part of our ongoing research. Probably you will hear more exciting news in the near future. Um, so actually, in the, this is a white paper released by DOE about five years ago. At that time, they assessed that a lithium metal may not be practical for fast charging because of the traditional concerns about the dendrite growth. Our recent research just proved that we were able to fully eliminate the dendrite growth. 
That means we are redefining and really enabling the holy grail lithium metal battery by synergistically working on these four, four, these four aspects uh, from the quantitative fundamental understanding to developing new materials and the new cell engineering ar approaches as well as new manufacturing methods. So I want to highlight a news that many of you may already know, that General Motors is bringing $2.6 billion to build a battery manufacturing plant at Lansing area by 2024. This will create 5,000 well-paid jobs related to EVs and the batteries. And my research group has built long-term collaboration with several teams in General Motors. And more, what's more exciting is MSU mobility is actually growing very rapidly. And coupling these uh, rising resources, opportunities, and the world leading research we are conducting now, I believe the battery research and the manufacturing at MSU is ready to take off. In the next few years, we will train talented workforce, especially leaders for this rising field. Last but not least, I want to introduce my group to all of you. I'm glad that my students are enjoying their research in my group very much. And we do believe that the Holy Grail battery is no longer a dream. We are working together to make it happen at MSU. Thank you for your attention. I'm happy to take any questions. I have a comment. Just thank you very much for this research and how exciting it is because it, it, Michigan is the put the world on wheels and yes. our rich history is in auto manufacturing and we will lose that legacy if we can't make the shift to the future and the future is clearly electric vehicles and battery technology and by your research and your colleagues and the investment here whether it is the chip technology it is the battery electric vehicles will position not only Michigan State University to be a leader in the future, but will enshrine the state of Michigan in its rightful place in our in our rich automotive history. So thank you. Yeah, thank you very much. We appreciate it. Other questions? Yes. What, uh, Dr. Fang, this is fascinating, by the way. Thank you. Thank you for sharing uh, your presentation. What um, problems or barriers do you need to solve to get this to commercial application that you're working on? Oh, that's a very good question. Actually, uh, my, the, my working uh, philosophy is trying to bridge the gap between the lab and the industry. Actually, the, those morphology, very high level of control of the lithium we achieved in the lab is in a relatively small scale. But uh, like our batteries, probably the coin cell is only this size. But in the EV battery, the, back the battery pack, the single cell can be very large. They are uh, consists of several layers, and uh, for the even larger battery pack, they can be this size. So I think the the uh, homogeneity of in the manufacturing, as well as the safety uh, control, would be a concern if we want to translate this technology from the lab to the real application. Is, is the disposition of lithium an environmental hazard or concern, and what would be the average life of a, a lithium battery that you're Oh, lithium, you mean the life cycle life of lithium metal batteries? Yeah. Um, actually, uh, our target is for 500 uh, cycles use. That means if, uh, for example, if we can, and that it, it brings a lot of uh, 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 in, in, in impact if we can increase the mileage per charge. So actually, if you just charge, if, if we can uh, reach 600 miles per charge, that means probably you just charge once a month. So 500 cycles, 500 cycles means you can use many years. And uh, I think in terms of the environmental uh, impact, uh, one of the projects in my group is the battery recycling. We're trying to find a, a more environmental friendly way to recycle the spent batteries without the impact of the environment and really collect those very valuable elements such as cobalt and nickel from the spent batteries for reuse. Great. We all agree. There's a significant secondary market now for these batteries. So after they've been used in transportation where you have to deal with high and high di 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 discharge rates, which I believe could lead to the dentrants you're trying to, to yeah. mount and work against, 
there's a huge set secondary market growing in how we can store an energy uh, that is converted from, say, sunlight to electricity or wind to electricity and use that to buffer our, our power systems. So there's turning out to be a great second light to it, and then eventually the recycling will, will have to be Great. I mean, always the, the issue is trying to figure out what to prioritize to, you know, to get the market through the concept. So I don't know if that's a primary or whether the initial battery is application is, is the focal point, but good luck. That's a technology disruptor. Thank you. Other questions? Yeah, absolutely. Because <laughs> I understood some of it, most. <laughs> I did look up dendrite, um, yeah. <laughs> which still unclear. I'm not, probably need to take a class. Um, but I, I, I appreciate your research. I just have a couple of like practical questions. Uh -huh. So when you get on the plane, it will, the, the announcement will be to turn off and take and remove all lithium batteries. Is there a reason for this? Oh yeah, actually, uh, yes. So the current lithium ion batteries, during the biggest challenge is because of the intercalation chemistry I just mentioned. And the, the lithium can easily grow on the graphite as well. But in that environment, because the electrolyte is designed for graphite, not for lithium metal. So it's particularly easy to grow dendrite in our current battery. So it's, uh, and the electrolyte we're using is organic solvents, they are very flammable. So if you're charging your battery uh, in the airplane, uh, there is a risk that they may explode. Oh, okay, well, yeah, that's <laughs> You could have just led with that. <laughs> Thanks for the whole explanation. Because you know, they tell you to turn off your phone, but really, you can, you can keep your phone on. But not that, that's a good idea to take that out. I, I, but I don't have a lithium battery. So the other thing too, it seemed like um, the Jetsons is upon us. Can am, am I gonna have a Jetson? You probably don't. You too, young. What, what it? <laughs> you like Jetson? <laughs> so it's a cartoon. Wow. So I am old. You do know the Jetsons. I know the Jetsons. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. The Jetsons. There's. You get to get up, get into a, a, a little pl a plane and, and ride around. We're gonna be able to do this pretty soon. Is that what you're telling me? I hope so. Okay. I think <laughs> those are all yeah, my questions. That's our goal. <laughs> those are all my questions. I appreciate you working your work. Looking forward to my plane. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? I just wanted to make a comment that I really enjoy just watching you talk about your work because you are like so excited and I can like feel the passion that you have. Like you sure. gave me goosebumps even like Dr. Remus said, I don't necessarily understand all that you're saying, but I can feel the excitement and that we're close to something. I just really appreciate your work you're doing, so thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. So, so great presentation. Thank Thanks. you so much. I think everybody enjoyed it. Yeah. I think you, you made it chemistry interesting. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but I know the provost finds it very interesting as well. Okay. But, uh, thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So, thank you yeah. so much.